Hello and welcome to Statistic TV. I am conducting an interview today with Dej the Eagle. The guy is an amazing, amazing artist. But without me saying it, let him tell you himself. <laughs> let him tell you how amazing it is. Dej, nice to nice to finally, finally talk to you. No, sorry, talk to you. Nice to talk to you too. Now we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. First and foremost, uh, I know you a lot. I I know you well, but my audience may not know you. Yeah. Could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I don't know what more to say other than um, I'm Dej the Ego, rapper, producer, sound engineer from East London. Yeah. Uh, a proper lyricist, but like proper engulfed in the Afro swing genre at the moment. The first time, the first time I actually ever saw you perform, I never, I've never, I didn't even actually know that you were actually into music like that. I thought that you were a football nerd. Uh, like, uh, yeah. yeah, because uh, like our first encounter was or was actually on, on the on football the pitch. pitch. And then our second encounter was, funny enough, at the London um, London RBS event. I'm, I'm not sure if you remember. I think that was in um, yeah, yeah, Notting, Notting Hill, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, uh, 2016, I think. 2016, I believe. Two. When you made Babylon. Yeah. And you were performing that. That was the first time yeah. I saw your... Uh, uh, I saw I saw you perform and I, I was like okay he's serious yeah, he's yeah. serious yeah. so can you, so yeah talk um talk uh, to give, give us a bit a brief history like uh, how did you get into music um a very brief one um I've been doing music since I was very very young started playing the violin when I was like five like in year two so five or six um loved Michael Jackson all the time so used to like bang out his stuff um then comes to like secondary school so it's like I was performing in assembly like writing poetry kind of thing comes to secondary school then grime becomes prominent so I start like becoming a grime MC yeah. doing very very well like locally like in Newham and then comes to college like still it was like UK rap was emerging so I started doing like a bit of UK rap yeah. wasn't really working out for me so I kind of took a break from it and of course A-levels took over yeah, yeah. went to uni decided to start producing because I heard my boy produce and I absolutely loved what he could do like I was amazed that he could make music from his room like that I never that concept was always foreign to me so yeah, then I yeah. started producing getting my head around that that made me a better artist um, and then like end of third year i started doing like more sound engineering yeah. like mixing my own beats mastering my own beats kind of thing um and then coming out of uni uh like the emergence of afro swing i just naturally kind of progressed into that because that was yeah. always kind of an element of me like afro swing is mostly like rapping uh mixed with like a bit of singing but like yeah. it's like a sub genre of hip hop yeah. and then it's got like the afro elements i'm nigerian i love african music yeah. i loved afro beats when it was like proper prominent yeah. and even till now so it was like a natural progression and being a uk artist that's like the the lane you're going down so yeah that's how i got here i would say so with the emergence of with the with the emergence of our, our of afro swing mm -hmm. i i actually like what you um what you actually bring into it because yeah because correct me if i'm wrong actually you know you, you know what a lot of people are gonna hate me for saying this because afro swing is quite big now i'm not a big fan of afro swing yeah yeah and people. that's mainly because of the fact that i believe that the mainstream kind of sound that we're hearing it, it, it does lack the storytelling part of it yeah, it's yeah. just mainly focused on just having a good time which there's nothing wrong with that i don't knock that but they don't they don't seem to be a level of artistry that i can yeah. relate to yeah. you know what i'm trying to say and that's why i actually love um love what you did with swing your your swing ep yeah. um i think we had a conversation about this i told you it's yeah. going to be sophisticated like yeah. it's not gonna be like it can be shallow if it needs to be yeah. shallow but i can make it deeper if i need to make it deeper and i love that like i i love that like um with swing like foxtra was uh I hurt, I like, I, st I still can't get over I know you got the darkness I know you kinda heartless Let me show you a good time Let me show you a good time <laughs> I still can't go over that Like, no wonder he got 49,000 Spotify plays Because he was quality on his, uh, on his own But I gotta ask you with your new EP, uh, with your new, with your new EP, mm -hmm. why didn't Bare Hair make it? Yeah, Bare Hair and I don't know who it belongs to On that, on that EP it's a confusing one because that, e <laughs> that EP wasn't even supposed to come out then. Like, Bare Hair is on a part of another EP that I have that's already finished, that I finished in August. Yeah. Bare Hair was on that, but I don't know. Like, I just progressed so fast that I started making swing and then it just was like, 
a lot of the a lot of the sound on that EP is like a summer sound. Yeah. So it's like when you go to labels and stuff, they give you like little tips. They're like, there's a summer sound, there's a winter town yeah. sound. Afro swing as a genre used to be a summer thing, but now yeah. it's kind of becoming a summer slash winter thing. Yeah. But the winter kind of sound of Afro swing to me still needs to be darker than the summer sound. So if you listen to this EP in comparison, to trust swing, me, it's a lot like darker. Trust me, I could, deeper. I could, I could actually hear that and like um. And like it was like a kind of a winter creeping kind of feel exactly, to it, yeah. like like you know where you need that winter bay, like, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that winter bay. It's dark, like, it's dark early. Yeah, you're driving home, <laughs> like that kind of thing. Like that's that's how I wanted it to be. So even like that, the cover art, it's like it's got snow in the background. Yeah. I want people to know that it's like a winter time Afro swing stuff. Like a lot of people came to me from this EP and been like. Oh, I like the brighter sound. Yeah. It, it's not like swing too much. It's like swing, but it's not like swing. Yeah. Um, he likes the brighter sound. They like the brighter sounds kind of thing. So I was like, don't worry, that's coming, but that's for the summer. Yeah. Like when it gets to April, when the sun starts coming out, that's when I think you can enjoy that more. It doesn't matter too tough, but I'm just thinking about it on a, a deeper level. So that's why bare hair kind of just got pushed to the back. <laughs> Because I get it, Swing I get 2 it. just came through and it was just like, it's mad because you have, like, as an artist, you have a time frame as when you want to release everything. Yeah. And it never ever goes to plan. So it's yeah. like you always end up pushing stuff back. So by the time I was ready to release Bare Hair and Si Senor, which are like more like, to me, like summer kind of anthems, um, it was already winter. Like, yeah. Si Senor came out November. Ninth, um, bare hair came out like the twenty sixth of October. Yeah, that's that's autumn, like going on to winter. So it's like, it's already getting dark early. So I'm yeah. just like, okay, that, that yeah, time's yeah. passed. But don't worry, there's an e- like he, that that project's finished. That's the maddest thing. That the project that bare hair is embedded into is finished. Like I could put that out any day. With so much music, because <laughs> you're just putting out music, and even I'm caught unaware. Why don't you, if you release music and you even see Sydney or like, um, or like, like I, I have, I'm like. That caught me unawares. Mm-hmm. Like um, I like I listened to Bear Hair and I was like, okay, I digested this one. Yeah. Listen to Swing Two, I digested this one, and I missed that one. You missed it. Yeah. I, I missed it's like a, you know with so much music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you just release an album? Al- <laughs> albums are not for like first of all upcoming artists. Yeah. Number two, UK artists. Like it's not my fault. Like I'm that kind of person. That's the yeah. maddest thing. Like again, like you can imagine how many songs that I have got that are not that didn't make the EP. Like I literally the other day, like a week ago, I put up three songs that didn't make Swing Two EP that are all good. Like too good for me to throw away. Like I never want to throw them away. So I'm gonna plan to release them kind of yeah. later. But like they might end up being throwaways because I'm still gonna make more music as the time goes by. So I'm an album person yeah but it's literally about you have to adapt to the environment you're in we're not in an environment an album friendly yes. industry like america uh, is even coming away from that let yeah. alone the uk like it's more streaming now i'm, I'm yeah like, on it, like yeah. it's like i could release an album and the last track on the album say i've got 10 songs on the album yeah the last song on the album is gonna have like the lower streams exactly yeah, yeah. and it will be cons- considerably lower than everything else yeah. because it's like we, we just like people have music so far they don't yeah. want that like it's like they were, the maddest thing is like my manage, my my manager's angry at me for like releasing EP and like, two EPs because they're like back to back. Just, yeah, they were just like <laughs> just release these singles. Recess is a single one month later. DLT is a single one yeah. month later. Pictures a single one month later. Blah blah blah, and just keep doing that. That's what everybody of uh, uh, every other artist do does. But I want it to be kind of like a story. I'm trying to get to a place where I can release I, albums, and that's always going to be my ethos. But honestly, I, <laughs> honestly, I'm glad you said that. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I don't want to lose my four on that one cool, because. Sir. Because honestly, I felt that with with um, with Swing One and Swing Two, because if you put them together, it's actually quite an incredible story. Like yeah. there, like there's a there um there's there, there's a mini evolution going on there with No Scrubs part um part yeah. one and two. Yeah. In No Scrubs one, I believe that was a bit more about uh about how the guy how the girls are taking advantage, oh, okay. and this one is more more about the guys. Yeah. Prim- is, is is that correct? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That. Talk like, us through that. Like yeah. no no scrubs was a song. It's literally about no scrubs, the TLC song, but yeah. it's like flipped it from a guy's perspective. So like, um, people are like everybody in general. I shouldn't even just say females or girls. People are just money and tori- in t- in orientated nowadays and yeah. there's always like there's an expectation from society that men have to have money yeah girls are here to kind of get money kind of stuff um so yeah it's literally just telling that story me saying that i don't want that kind of person yeah. and then in part two it's literally like i'm being somebody a guy who has money yeah that's dissing me because i haven't got money yeah so i'm dissing myself so like i talk about like things that i have in my real life like I only have a Ford Fiesta. Yeah. So that's something that I say on the track. So there's like a fraud guy that's got bare money yeah. dissing me. 
who hasn't got money and saying, I'm going to take your girl because you ain't got enough peas. I've got more peas than you. Basically. You see, you, you, like that kind of storytelling is why I'm actually just waiting for your first album because I can just imagine Hopefully, in my head. It will come soon. I'm, I can't wait. I, I can't wait till I'm, at the, I'm in a position where somebody says yeah. to me like, okay, you need to release an album now. Like, yeah. I'll lock myself away, create the stories that I have in my head and like put my all into it to make not it get a trim. <laughs> not get a trim. Yeah, that's part of the look. You have to. Yeah, some, yeah, if you get a trim, people will be like, you're not serious, bro. Why are you going to the barbers? And, and, and final question, like, what's your writing process? Because like, when I listen to all these songs, when I hear your, your lyrics, like the Pep G tactics and then... And then, and then, and then, and then my, boys were, my boys were asking me about this yesterday, the writing process. I don't know, for me, I've noticed like when I get into it, because now I'm just, like, I'm doing a bit more sessions with other rappers or yeah. other stuff. And that's been happening across like, my span as an artist but now a bit more so I'm seeing how other people write kind yeah. of thing and I'm not gonna lie like for me it's just like these things come naturally like in my day to day life I'll be thinking of metaphors or whatever like they'll just come to me this comes yeah. like telling jokes it's like you'll be doing something you think of a metaphor like calm like and then once you have that metaphor you log that in your head like sometimes you write it down like this is gonna be a good line or you just log it in your head and then when it comes to actually writing something, you just incorporate that. So that's one way I do it. Like there's like a stored number of lines that I want to put in a certain verse. And another way of doing it is just like, I just want to write a verse. Like yeah. I've noticed with Afro Swing, it's a lot less about, to up to most people, it's a lot less about lyrics and it's more yeah. about flow, cadence, yeah. the actual sonics elements of yeah. like a verse. So then I just focus on that. Like I'm not even too, too focused on like, um, being lyrical, rhyming with syllables. But you, like, but you still bring that yeah, on a yeah. higher level, I on a very high level. I can't help it, and I think God <laughs> that I can't help yeah. it. Because I'm trying to, like, this is what I was saying to my, I was saying to my friends that Drake is the best rapper because in comparison to J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, who are better lyricists, Drake knows when to dumb down. Yes. He's yes, versus, I agree. Like that, so he can cater to so many people. Yes, I agree. Because you, you still see debates now on Twitter and social media that like Kendrick Lamar's not a good rapper, yeah. J. Cole's not a good rapper, they're boring or blah 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 and it's literally because some for some people they're too lyrical like you can imagine yeah. let's take like Kendrick somebody who's super intelligent talking about super intelligent stuff you have to have a good level of general knowledge to understand all of Kendrick Lamar's lyrics yes. even me even now I still don't still know, know. Like, exactly, like, yeah. I still go back and, so and you listen can, yeah. you can imagine audiences range from like 5 years of age to 80 years of age like Kendrick Lamar cuts off everybody probably below 18. That's not yeah. going to understand his lyrics. Maybe even 21. Drake would have a sh very, very shallow verse. So everybody will understand what he's yeah. saying. Saying very, very basic stuff. And then he can still do the lyrical stuff as well. Yeah. So he's got that, that kind of, that kind of like, he's in right in the gray area where he can kind of do both. And that's what I'm kind of learning to do. I see, I see that you're a Drake fan as well. <laughs> I love Drake, man. I love Drake. Honestly. Love that. Love that. Okay, though. Thank you so much for your time. No Thank, Thank you so you much too. for your time. Thank you too. Best of like, you know, like uh, when you release your album, we're doing an interview.